Now I'm going to go ahead and place the bear gel. Needle primed. So the needle's been primed. We've got a red mark on the needle. We're going to put that towards the floor so that the bevel's in the proper position. I like to start at the midline, and the goal is to go over the rectal hump. So we want to go in on an angle like this, go over the rectal hump somewhere towards the mid gland. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the needle. Again, I like to kind of watch the needle for the entire duration, and I'd like to see the entire length of the needle on my screen. So again, I'm going to look at my probe. I'm going to go immediately above it uh, by about a half to half an inch to an inch, and I'm going to go ahead and pierce the skin. And I can scroll back, and you can see my needle tip there. And we're going to go ahead, and I'm watching the screen. So I'm not watching my hands. I'm really just watching the ultrasound screen. I want to see my needle tip. I try to stay closer to the prostate because I really don't want to pierce the rectal wall. So I just kind of hug the posterior aspect of the prostate. You can see that I'm into that perirectal fat, which is that white line immediately underneath the prostate. And I feel like I'm in a good place here. And we can verify that by going to our axial images. So you can see my needle tip right there. And you can see that I'm not into the rectal wall, which means I'm in a reasonable place uh, to start my berry gel placement. You can see that as I insert the bear gel, that we are now getting separation between the prostate and the rectum. And it's kind of going to the path of least resistance. So you can see it's moving over more uh, to his right side. And we can kind of scroll in and see how much we're getting towards the base. I can pull back, and we can get more towards the apex. You can see that we have a pretty good layer already going from base to apex. Now, for whatever reason, it seems to be favoring one side, his right side. So the nice thing about bear jaw is we can go back and we can place more wherever it's needed. So I've gone through one vial. I'm going to go ahead and add some more. So that was just three cc's to create that much separation. I like to go back to my sagittal view as well. You know, kind of going back and forth between uh, axial and sagittal I think is always a kind of a good idea. So you can see the right side where it was kind of going in the path of least resistance. We actually have a pretty fantastic layer already. Not quite so much at the midline, not quite so much going back to his left. But again, we can kind of fill this in. So the key to me is always to be able to see your needle as you're inserting. You can see that I'm getting a really good layer here at the apex. And what I always kind of like to see, and this is actually a beautiful illustration of this, is there's fat actually on both sides of the gel. So the white, again, is the fat. So you can see that there's a fat layer here, and there's a fat layer on top. That just tells you, once again, that you're in the right spot. We will use a third one.
So all I'm doing is I'm using the stepper stabilizer to kind of rock through both sides of the prostate. So we can see, if I go all the way over to his right side, you can see that there's a fair amount of distance now between the rectal wall, which is down here, and the posterior aspect of the prostate, which is all the way up here. So we can even measure that. Um, but you can see that we're looking at at least nine millimeters. It's probably a little more. So I'm pretty happy with where that is. But if I come over to the midline, it looks good there. If I come over all the way to his left side, it looks like we could use some more over there. So again, the beautiful thing about this is I can add wherever I want. And as long as I can see the tip of my needle, I know where the bear gel is going in. And we can just lift that prostate away from the rectum. We're going to scroll through again. And I'm just rotating. Now we'll go back to our axial images, and I still have another cc or so left, and we can see if we want to fill in anywhere else. So you can see all the way up at the apex how much coverage we have. You know, this is toward the base. I mean, one thing you know we always kind of talk about is how much is enough. We can kind of measure here, and we can see, do we want to add something or not? So this is at the base of the prostate. Again, this would be, you know, so maybe six and a half here, seven. So if I'm going to add anything, probably that's where I'm going to add. Let's take a look. You can see here, this is more towards the mid-gland. You can see more like seven and a half. This would be what I would consider to be the apex. So nine and a half. So I think our apex is pretty well covered here. I think if you want to see kind of what it would really look like when he's actually getting treatment, uh, we do put anterior pressure on the probe to get good pictures. Uh, the reality is that it's going to decompress when there's no probe in there, which is how he's going to be for uh, post-seed implant. And that just opens the space, obviously, up even more. So now we guess we can do measurements. These are probably more realistic measurements. So here we are at the apex. And this to the rectal wall, you're looking about more like 12 or 13. We can go in a little bit further. So this is more towards the mid-gland. This is probably more of the mid-gland. We can do some measurements here. 
so more like 10 millimeters. And then even here at the base, you know, again, the question is, do I need to put anything more? The reality is, here's the distance that I have. So maybe seven and a half. So since I have an extra CC, what I'll do is I'll put in a little bit more right there. Maybe right around here. And we'll kind of see what we have. So again, I put that little pocket in. I'm not so sure it made a whole lot of difference. Uh, but either way, you know, a pretty huge distance between the posterior aspect of the prostate uh, and the rectal wall. So now that we're finished with that part of it, we're going to do our volume study, and then we'll be all finished.